An empty room. I scan the cell. It's about three metres by 3.5 metres in size and holds a single bed, a desk, a shower, a seatless toilet and a tiny sink. That's all. The concrete walls are littered with graffiti and the solitary double glazed window is blurred and hard to see through. If the walls could speak, they would tell horror stories about the trauma and despair they'd seen countless women go through. Signs of distress are everywhere. The desk has scratches and burns, paint has been etched and tampered with, and the sink has chunks of rigid plaster missing. Not one person who stayed here was happy. Anxiety haunts the air, and I can almost smell the pangs of guilt and depression. Despite its confinement... The bed is comfy enough, and I've stayed in worse hostels back in my travelling heydays, but this is not a hostel, and I can't leave even if I want to, because I am in prison cell 22. This book reflects on my time in cell 22 and how I ended up there, but it's more than that. The devastating trauma, mistakes and shame that precedes this story might shock some of you. I'll be addressing uncomfortable topics, and my goal for doing so is to bring these necessary conversations to the surface. This book also reflects on what is now called the freedom movement. I was in Victoria, Australia during COVID, which was the world's longest and harshest lockdowns, and I can give you first-hand experience of the impacts of that. There is a lot of speculation about this community of diverse people. I will give you a real insight into the motives and inner workings and mentality of this evolving and expanding movement. It's important I share all these parts of my life to give you a fuller picture of how a very regular, law-abiding, tax-paying, 33-year-old Australian woman ended up in prison.